Hello everyone and welcome to this special edition extraction of starch experiment. This experiment is a special edition because we're using premium sweet potatoes instead of the good old russet potatoes. One important difference when you look at the nutrition facts in your lab notebook, you'll see that there, there is a much higher percentage of actual starch in russet potatoes than there are in sweet potatoes. So I don't really like my um, odds of getting a large amount of starch from the potato, but we can still calculate what's expected anyway. So looking at this nutrition label, it looks like for our 23 grams of carbohydrates, which is what most of the potato is at 100 calories, 23 grams times four calories per gram is, um, is 92 calories of carbohydrates. So most of what we have is carbohydrates, but if you look at the dietary fiber, we need to subtract that out, and the total sugars, which is not starch, we need to subtract that out too. So that means instead of 23 grams of starch, we actually have 19 minus seven is 12. So we actually have 12 grams of starch in, in a sweet potato if we have the full serving size of 130 grams. So 130 grams of sweet potato, at least this premium sweet potato, um, has 12 grams of starch. So let's say theoretically in this experiment, we were going to use 117 grams of sweet potato. 117 grams is to 130 grams as x grams is to 12 grams. So 117 over 30 equals x over 12. We can solve for x and figure out the number of grams expected. It looks like 117 over 130 so 117 over 130 is going to be a percentage, so 90%. So 90% of 12 grams is our expected yield. I'll let you guys do the exact calculations um, up to a decimal point to give our um, theoretical amount of starch recovered from this. All right, as you guys are watching, I decided to go ahead and mute this because honestly it was a little bit embarrassing that I was a little bit disorganized as I was uh, peeling these potatoes. Um, but anyway, we can only do our best in these situations. So I'm right now peeling the skin off the potato. Um, there is no starch within that skin, so we might as well purify it to a certain extent before we start allowing um, the starch to separate from the actual potato. Also, usually I cook my potatoes whole. I'm not used to using this uh, um, grater here, um, but obviously, I mean, I guess not obviously, but if you're comfortable with graters, you'd be aware that more of it would actually come out the back. Therefore, it's important to uh, peel from the front there. Anyways, that's enough about the embarrassment. So as we continue, this took a little bit of time, so I chopped off the video. We did get 117 grams of the potato. All right, as we continue, we're combining the uh, extractions into one beaker. Looking back again, I probably should have used uh, like a laminate mat underneath so I could just filter it all in there. And again, that's 117 grams of sweet potato. And now we're adding some water in there. And again, it's important to think about this. So starch, normally you think sugar is soluble in water, but starch actually is not all that soluble in water. It's actually a long chain polymer, which means it is not going to be soluble in water. However, 
once we can dissociate it from the fiber, fiber of the potato, it will run through that cheesecloth filter. So that cheesecloth filter has some pretty large areas that polymers can actually run through. So we do expect our starch to run through that cheesecloth. So even though it's still you know, floating in water, it's not soluble in water, it still isn't going to be caught by that non-fine filter paper or cheesecloth, more appropriately said. So we're adding more water in there to do um, essentially another extraction. Um, looking back, I think probably this should have been done a little bit longer, so we should have let it set in the water a little bit longer. We also should have really smashed that potato in. So using that glass stir rod is a pretty light stirring mechanism. So looking back, probably it should have been um, a larger glass area or anything, anything else really to kind of crush the potato a little bit more to dissociate that um, starch from the actual potato. So we're filtering it through that cheesecloth again. We're going to squeeze a little bit out to maximize the number of the amount of starch that comes through. And then we'll put the rest in the cheesecloth, or at least a little bit more, and squeeze that through. And again, looking back, I probably shouldn't have put that on the table. You can probably see some liquid leaking through there. Um, all right, so rather than show a long portion of video, we let it settle for quite a bit of time. And you can see at the very bottom of that glass, there's actually a white layer of starch. You can't see it super clear. So here's a lifted version of the glass where the starch is actually settled to the bottom. Um, this is decanting that top layer, leaving the bottom layer. This is after we added some water. So once we added a little bit more water to wash it, a lot of that starch got stirred up in the solution. Probably I should have added it a little bit slowly to the side of the glass, but still plenty did settle. And this is us decanting the water from the top. This is after decanting. Again, after decanting, letting it dry for a little bit. Just another picture of what it looked like after we decanted for the second time. And this is when it's a little bit more dried. We put it on a hot plate to dry it just a little bit more. And now after the potato was dry, I'm zeroing a whey boat. And then we are going to scrape off all that starch from the bottom of the beaker. Again, um, so the starch is um, mostly dry, but it still um, adheres to that glass a little bit strong, which is what happens after you essentially heat it on a actual hot plate to dry it. Um, we weren't too aggressive with a hot plate, um, but it is still pretty, a little bit sticky. Um, again, like I talked about before, the decanting process um, especially after we washed it with water that first time. That was a little bit fast. We probably should have let it sit a little bit longer. I was just running out of recording time for this. Um, so I expect our yield to be pretty low. Um, also, essentially, the more starch polymer you have, the more it is attracted to itself and pulls more of itself out of the solution. This already started. Our odds were pretty low from the very beginning. So based on that as well, I wouldn't be surprised if our percent recovery was pretty low here. Um, but you should be able to calculate the percent recovery based on the expected amount, um, regardless of what the number is. All right, so after the zeroed weigh boat, it looks like we have 0.6530 grams. So 0.6530 grams.